Welcome to 2019, everybody! Welcome back to another episode of Saturday Afternoon Gaming, and welcome to the year 2019! My name is Gaming J, and today we are checking out OutRun 2019, because boy oh boy, we did it, we made it, we made it to the year 2019, we live in a cyberpunk paradise, and uh, boy, I bet if, if only the Mayans could see us now, you know, didn't they think the world was going to end in like the year 2000 or something? I feel like every conspiracy theorist I ever, like, encounter, um, not that I encounter that many, but they're always saying, like, oh, the world's gonna end in 2000, oh, then it's 2002, then it's 2004, and lo and behold, we're in the year 2019. When are people gonna give it up and realize the world is never gonna end, it's just gonna keep on going, being awesome. Or at least I hope so. I hope, uh, I hope I don't, I hope those aren't famous last words. Anyway, uh, let's, let's put thoughts of the apocalypse aside, and, um... Yeah, as I say, so this is the year 2019. This is the first video on my channel uh, in that year, and I thought we needed to find a game that takes place in the year 2019. I went searching and I found this. Look at the cityscape there. Outrun 2019. That is just awesome. The second I saw this game, I knew we were going to be playing it today. So uh, that brings us, that, that catches you guys up. So uh, we have different levels we can play. Hard, normal, or easy. I guess I'll leave it on normal reluctantly. Um, I mean, I should be playing every game on easy because sometimes uh, it just bites me bites me hard that I'm terrible at games on the fly sometimes. But like, you know, it feels like copping out to play every game on easy. So I got to like, you know, uh, I got to like toughen up here and like represent. I got to play on normal. Um, as always, these old games had sound tests. So if you just want to like hear like different sounds that that exist in the game. Why? Why did every old game have this? I, I don't get it. Was there like a huge demand for like people to hear random sounds from the video game? I just, I really, I really don't understand. But anyway, we don't have to understand. Uh, we're in the year 2019, and and this isn't this a isn't the cyberpunk future a perfectly accurate representation of our future? Um, let's go ahead and enter our name. Why not? Let's be let's let's be official about this. We're not just some uh, no name dude racing. We are J2000. Where's the zero? We are J... Oh, J200. Uh, it sounds less futuristic. Uh, yeah, like, isn't that fun? Like, the year 2000 is behind us, but J2000 sounds more realistic. J200 is like the bargain bin version of J2000. Anyway, in this game, you get four different courses, and you, as you can see, there's multiple different sort of tracks. I mean, this is a very outrun thing to do where the road splits in different ways uh, when you get to like certain checkpoints and you can choose which route to take. Ooh, like that one looks complicated. Um, there's only four, so we're going to be checking them all out today because why not? But let's start with stage one, the nice and simple stage, generic urban environment number one. Uh, we're going to go with that. So you have a brake button. I don't know why you would ever press brakes in outrun because, uh, you know, outrun is like in order to win, you need to go fast. Um, notice that we're already at 500 miles an hour. That is, like, faster than a jet, man. We're, like, we blew past the sound barrier in, like, no time at all. Oops, I think I just, uh, hit the brakes, actually. So once you hit to, like, max speed, you're, you know, like an afterburner inside your car, a jet engine in your car just, like, lights up, and you just, you just gun it. Like, look at this. This is insane. 682 miles an hour. Not kilometers. Miles an hour. That is like that. I don't even know how fast that is. I have no reference for that. Like literally, you would you would like black out like a fighter pilot. Like all the blood would rush from your like eyeballs to the back of your skull, and you would like literally fall unconscious. It's crazy. So uh, yeah, we're just gonna have fun with this game today. I don't have a lot of experience driving uh, much beyond 500 miles an hour, even in video games. So we'll see how this goes. But uh, hopefully it takes me a while to kind of get a hold of the, uh, get a hang of the controls, but then it sort of like comes to me. Because I would like to see these different urban environments that we got going on here. Right? We are g leaning to the left, and uh, off we go. You know, it's funny how like in the 80s and 90s, we all, every time you see the future depicted 
It's always depicted as like a cyberpunk future. Like, look at these cars. They didn't predict no Toyota Prius. No, they're predicting like these awesome, like futuristic, like Blade Runner-esque, you know, cyber cars. And it's remarkable that they still predicted we would have grassy fields in the year 2019. I would imagine it would just be all urban environments, but I guess, I guess some some reasonability had to come into their predictions. Um, but yeah, I you know I for one wish we did actually live in a cyberpunk, you know, paradise. I you know, when I was a kid, they kept promising me that when I get in the future, everything's gonna be cyberpunk and be like Johnny Mnemonic. You put hard drives in your head and stuff and. I was all like, yeah, I'm on board with that. Like, do it. Let's, l like, l stop talking about doing it and let's do it. And then they all, like, chickened out. Everyone was like, you know what? That whole si Oh, I, I keep thinking that's an obstacle, but I think that's a jump. It's like everyone in power kept saying, you know, I, I think that cyberpunk thing, may maybe we shouldn't actually do that. Oh, that's cool. We hit a jump. Neat. So anyway, no cyberpunk future for us. Um, Outrun 2019 here, by the way, is the pseudo-sequel to... The original Outrun, and you may be scratching your head saying pseudo sequel. Like, what the hell does that mean? Like, what did they only kind of make a video game? Uh, you know, your eyes are kind of deceiving you right now. This is only a partial video game. It's a pseudo sequel. Um, I actually had to look it up to know what exactly they were talking about. A pseudo sequel. Basically, this game did not start its life as an Outrun game. It was originally called. Uh, oh God, what was it called? Oh, I, lo I look down at my notes. I'm all over the place. It was called Cyber Road. It was made for Sega CD, and uh, when they realized, for whatever reason, they didn't want to put this on the Sega CD, they downgraded it to a Sega Genesis game. Oh god, I'm on a bridge. This could end in disaster. Jeez, stay on the road. The the stakes are really high now. Or is that is that not a bridge? Yeah, no, it's a bridge. We're elevated. Oh god, I don't want to fall in the water. My god. Um, when, it, when it moved to the Sega Genesis, though, I think they... Oh, into the water we go. Huh. Well, they reset you pretty quick. Um, anyway, they called it Junkers High. So I don't, I don't know how you go from Cyber Run to Junkers High. This, So now it's like about, you know, car junkers or something. I, I don't get it. But uh, they kind of figured that was not going to work. And then they were like, you know what sold reasonably well? You know what was a great game? is Outrun. And you know what game this one reminds us of? is Outrun. So let's just call it Outrun 2019 and be done with it. And lo and behold, they did. And, uh, and yeah... They predicted that this would be the future. Hey, we, we actually completed the, the course. I am shocked. I am shocked and surprised in a pleasant way. So J200 can actually race. It's nice when the, the top scoreboard is literally zero. Like, there's a very low bar you gotta pass to place on this scoreboard. I will take it, though. And let's go ahead and try the next stage. Let's not, let's not put your foot around here, man. You know, we're, we're going through all of them today. Um, as much as I do like, like, the graphics in this game look cool, and, like, the environment seem kind of cool, and if you liked Outrun, I could see this being a, a cool game, I do kind of feel like a game that only gives you four levels is a bit of a cop-out. Even if there are multiple paths through the level and whatnot, it's sort of like, yeah, but there's only four levels, and you d it's not like you race against anyone else, I don't know. Like, for the first Outrun, it was admissible, because that was the first Outrun game, and, you know... Um, it was the first game like that, but by the time this game came out, I think this game came out a few years after Outrun. I actually don't know. I forgot to... I didn't think I would want that information, so I didn't write it down anywhere. I'm just guessing, but I think this came out a few years after Outrun. I would say that's getting to the point where it's no longer permissible to just have four levels. Maybe that's just me, but uh, anyway. Uh, we get up to 500 miles an hour in no time flat. Man, this, this car is insane. Forget about racing, just... Your commute to work would literally be like a second. Like imagine, like do you guys fully comprehend 600 miles per hour? That translates to about a thousand kilometers an hour. I, th that's just nuts. That's just insane. Um, actually, interesting, interesting story with the speed of this game. If you played this game in Japan, your max speed is only 341 kilometers an hour which i guess that would be what 200 miles an hour or something like that so i i don't know why they thought the jap but they were like in japan it'll never work nobody's gonna be drive buying a game where you go 600 miles an hour a thousand kilometers an hour we got this has to be far more reasonable you know so they knocked it down by a third and actually if you play this game in europe if you have the eu version 
uh, then you only get to go up to 682 kilometers an hour, which I guess is something like 400 miles an hour. Or I, I don't know. I'm probably doing the math wrong on, my, uh, on the fly here, but, but I, I I don't understand that decision. Like, why didn't why didn't they just come up with a standard? Sp like, why are they? Like, it would take so much effort to localize the speed. What was the issue? What was the issue? They're like, oh, nobody's gonna believe, you know, 300 kilometers an hour people will buy in Japan, but six? No way, man. No way. Like, that that seems weird. I wonder, I, I would really like to know the backstory there of, like, what? why was the speed localized? It's just such a random, trivial detail uh, to localize, but anyway. Um, so how was your guys' New Year? New Year's... New Year. New Year. <laughs> how was your New Year? It's, uh... You know, it's all done now, of course, so maybe you made some New Year's resolutions, or maybe you went to an awesome party, you know, or maybe you didn't. Doesn't really matter one way or the other, uh, I suppose, in, in a grand nihilistic sense. <laughs> oh, that, that sounds like, of course it matters. If you went to a cool party, good for you. Hopefully you had a fun time. If you didn't, that's okay, too. Um, I, I think I've said before on this channel that I, I personally find New Year's a little bit overrated, where I feel like so many people make out like you're supposed to have like such a big party and stuff on new year's but like very rarely does it work out that way i have a few really great parties that i went to in new year's is over the years is that i can remember but uh you know some new years are just more chill where you're like hanging out with friends or you know your girlfriend or whatever and you don't really do all that much but anyway i hope you guys had good new year's hope you made some good resolutions um i have no new year's resolutions not to be boring but I never really make New Year's resolutions. I'm the kind of person who sort of like thinks, well, why would I special? Why would I specifically make a resolution at New Year's? Because there's all those studies showing most people don't follow their New Year's resolutions. Like if I want to make a resolution in my life, I just make it on like a Tuesday. You know, like there's I don't wait for a special event. So um, there have been resolutions I've made. I mean, one of the biggest ones that you guys have witnessed is the whole decision to play through the Thousand and One book. I made that decision one day, and I've been sticking to it as best I can. Um, and, yeah, I, I don't think I waited for New Year's on that. I think I, my first video was in the summer, so... One day I was just like, ah, it's time. Let's do this. The time has come. Time to play the Thousand and One Games book that somebody gave me for Christmas one year. I, I, you know what, I even forget where that book came from. It's been so long that it's like... The truth of where that book came from is blurred in my memory. I think I saw it in a bookstore and asked someone to buy it for me, but I don't even remember if that's true anymore. So it's funny how memory works like that. I, I don't even have access to my own personal life anymore. It's just blurred into a, a mystery of of the past. So that's how that works. Anyway, I love this I love this rocket that explodes in the back of my car. I wonder if that's street legal. Can we get that? It is the year 2019. Are we allowed to put rockets on our car yet? Oh, I landed on that guy. Also, where the hell are we? I thought we were going to be racing through some cyberpunk, uh, you know, paradise, but we're, like, just racing by, like, the, the pyramids? Somehow, we raced our way to Egypt. I mean, I guess, to be fair, when you do travel at 1,000 kilometers an hour, if you race for 10 minutes, you end up in Egypt. Like, we probably, probably, when we were going over the water... You know, you guys thought we were going over a lake or something? That was like me crossing the Atlantic. So every time we go over a bridge of water in this game, we're crossing like an ocean. And it only takes like 10 seconds. And we uh, once again scored number one. Um, this time I went left-left instead of left-right in terms of uh, my uh, decision of where to go with the forks in the road. Let's go ahead and try the next stage. See what we got going on. All right. We always start in like this bat cave. Uh, which, it actually does feel like a Batcave, because we're driving, like, a, a sleek, black, futuristic car with a jet engine coming out the back. Every Batmobile always has a jet engine. Ever since the Michael Keaton 1989 movie, every single Batmobile has always had a jet engine. And so that's, that's fair enough. Now we're racing in, like, I don't know where we are. We're in, like, some kind of rural Eastern European nation or something, judging by the landscape. Let's see if, by the time we're done racing, we can be in, like... You know, downtown Beijing. If we can race from Europe to China in uh, in a good 30, in a good two minutes. You know, that, that'll be the day. And imagine you did have a car that could go this fast. Like, global travel would be nothing to you. You'd be like, yeah, I used to fly. Then I realized my car, 
Uh, could literally break the sound barrier twice over. It, it in fact, approaches the speed of light. Forget about the, the speed of sound. I, I break the speed of sound when I back out of the driveway. Because it backs out at, like, you know, whatever speed it does. I guess all speeds in video games are totally arbitrary, though. Because, like, on the on the, the dashboard, it says you're going, like, 600, you know, kilometers an hour or whatever. But, like, the billboards aren't passing us any faster than they do in the original OutRun. Which kind of begs the question, like, either the speedometer's lying to us, which of course it is. Or, if we're to believe we're actually going, like, 600 miles an hour, those billboards must be, like, miles and miles apart. Oh, what? Game over? What happened? We just failed for no reason. My, I think my guy was, like, giving up. He's like, I can't do it anymore. Forget it. All right, let's go to exit here. We're going to go in, and we're going to change the difficulty down to easy, just so we can do the last two tracks. I raced a couple tracks on normal, just to show you guys what was what. But now we're going to go into easy mode, just so we can continue to chat for a bit. And J2, I like how the J200 profile is still here. Like, don't worry, we didn't erase it. You can still be your beloved J200. I can't believe that they only give you, like, six digits. Or, or six character spaces to, like, write a name. Like, that is ridiculous. <laughs> they should... Uh, you, give me ten. I don't know. Like, let me spell a cool name. And they give you, like, all the, like, numbers and punctuation. So there's another thing about old retro games. Okay, first of all, they all have the sound test. You know, like, I don't know why they all have the sound test. Who's testing all the sounds? I've never seen anyone actually use that feature. People always, like, go in and click around just because it's... You know, they're kind of like, oh, this is weird. But, like, I've never seen someone, like, earnestly be like, oh, thank God there's a sound test. I needed to hear the gargoyle uh, attack sound, and there was no other way for me to get it. Thank God they put the sound test in. Like, nobody actually uses that feature. And the other thing is, whenever they let you, you know, name your character, um, they always give you, like, all this crazy punctuation. You know, like, upper and lowercase letters, I think, are sufficient. Like, who needs an underscore when you're naming a person? Have you, have you ever encountered someone who has punctuation in their... I don't know, maybe you guys have encountered someone with punctuation in their name. Or numbers. But I feel like, you know, 99% of names can get by with just letters. No need to give us numbers. No need to put, give us a musical note and an exclamation point And a question mark and a tilde and uh, an at symbol. This isn't an email address. It's, it's a name. You're naming your character. So, I don't know. It's... I mean, whatever, it's, it's fun that they do. You can come up with crazy names like J200, but I feel like every retro game did that, and it's sort of like, I feel like they did it, but they didn't know why they were doing it. You know, like some developers out there, like asking his boss, like, why are we putting, why are we putting all this work into adding, like, you know, decimal places and commas and colons and, and all this stuff into, like, the name option? Let's just give them letters and numbers. The boss is like, no, 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 no. There are, there, are, there are standards in the video game industry here, okay? We know what we're doing. You do what we say, and we need we need significant amounts of punctuation options in, in uh, when players are entering their names. People will revolt. People will complain. They can't name themselves just a random mishmash of symbols. Then nobody's going to play this game, and so that's what they do. By the way, I feel like we are getting to downtown Beijing. Maybe my joke came, came true. Oh, yeah, here comes the jet. So I guess the way that it works is once you get to a high enough... Oh, we just did a flip! And we landed straight up. Wow. When you get to a high enough speed, the jet kind of kicks in. And then if you break or hit an object, then um, the jet will stop. So you kind of want that jet to go on for as long as possible. Like, this is actually a really good run right now with the jet. Oh, my God, look at this. Oh, but then that, that jerk got in my way. Okay, here's a pro tip. If you're ever on the highway and you hear... An insane burst uh, of noise, kind of like a Harrier jet behind you breaking the sound barrier. And you look in your rearview mirror and you see that there's a guy who literally has flames coming out of the back of his car. And he is flying towards you at speeds not known uh, in this world. What I would say is get out of the way. These cars that are in front of me, sometimes they swerve like literally right in front of me. And that's not cool, man. In fact, it's downright stupid and dangerous. They should be... Oh, man! Oh, I almost made it to... I almost did a jump off one side of, of the lower highway into the upper. The interesting thing is the upper highway there had no, no on-ramp or anything. 
Maybe that's like the legit way they design highways in the future. They, and that's how you're supposed to like get on them. And then like you're going on like a road trip with your parents and your dad's like, All right, everyone shut up. I got to get this baby up to 500 miles an hour so we can get on the on-ramp to Detroit. And they like hit the jump and everyone screams and you just hope you land it. <laughs> That'd be an awesome way to design highways. But yes, basically if someone is, is barreling up behind you at uh, superhuman speeds in their jet-powered car, just get out of the way. They don't want to, here's a, here's the thing, they don't want to ram into you. They, they decidedly are uninterested in it. And when you get in their way, it pisses them off and could very well get you killed. So there you go. There's Gaming J's uh, tip of the day, his pro tip of the day. Oh, into the water. They do reset you quick, though, so it doesn't really feel like there's too much incentive to, uh, to race well in this game. I mean, we did lose on normal, but... Um, I feel like I've just sort of been ping-ponging along, uh, along these tracks, like, not doing particularly well. Oh, God. But it doesn't seem to matter. Like, we seem to pass every track. So, at least we passed the first two. Again, we failed on the third. So, of course, I guess you do have to get better at this game. So, this game is all about improving them racing skills. But when the track turns, by the way, like, if I do nothing, the car will still generally turn in the right direction. Like... I mean, I am holding left right now, but anyway. Um, yes, oh, one other announcement um, is that uh, I may be doing a live stream or two in the next few days. I, I'm not 100% sure, and I don't know if you'll see an announcement in a video, because be, to be totally honest, the next video or two I actually have recorded already. Um, but if I do decide to put a live stream, I will, of course, post it uh, as an upcoming live stream on my channel. And you'll get a notification if you subscribe, so you'll be able to see when it is um, and all that. But uh, I, I have uh, I have a little bit of time, and I always say that I would love to do more live streaming. So uh, I think I'm actually going to take advantage. And, uh, whoa, we just jumped up to a higher highway. Whoa, that's pretty fun. Uh, but I always say I want to take advantage, so I'm actually going to take advantage, and we're going to do this, guys. A at least I'm pretty sure. Not 100%. Let's say that we are 85.7% sure that this is going to happen. So if you do if you do enjoy my videos and you aren't subscribed, you might want to subscribe just for the fact of, uh, you know, get that notification. But uh, I, I strongly suspect... Almost everyone watching this who actually likes me regularly. Oh, there's just, not only is it water, there's just nothing. That's just a pit to hell. But I strongly suspect many of you guys are already subscribed, so. I'm probably just preaching to the choir here, preaching to the choir. Um, speaking of cyberpunk games, by the way, have you guys... Oh, we just passed a level. All right, I'm going to save that little tidbit for the next race. Goal! It's like we scored in, in soccer. Um, we scored a goal with our car. All right, and here's our track. Here's the way we went. If you're curious, if you'd like to relive this video, we we went on the we hugged the outside on the left every which way. We ma could have made a choice at any at any time. We just always went to the left, like we we're solving a maze. And stage record of best five. Yeah, there you go. We're part of the ages, guys. One more one more race, and then that's it. And then then we've officially beaten this game. So I feel like there's there's absolutely no pride. There's some games where there's pride in being able to beat them. There's no pride in being able to beat OutRun 2019 because absolutely, if you have 20 minutes, you can beat this game. So obviously the joy is in, uh, you know, coming up with new records. So beating the game serves no purpose. Um, it, it's very sort of old school arcade in that sort of idea where, you know, in the old school arcade games, um, you played for score. You know, oftentimes there was no way to beat a game. Or like, for instance, like Pac-Man. There technically is a kill screen, and so there technically is an end to the game. But if that kill, if the bug that created that kill screen was not there, then the game would actually have no end, and it literally would go forever. And the, it was designed sort of with that mentality that there really was no end to it. And so the only reason to play Pac-Man is to, you know, get a high score. But because there is a definitive end to the game, there is a maximum high score you can get, so there is a perfect game in Pac-Man. So, interestingly, some old arcade developers who weren't trying to make a game that had an end actually did make a game that had an end, um, and it's usually because of a bug. So, um, but, but, but beyond that, the idea of playing for score is a very old-timey arcade notion. Not as many games are all about the score these days, although I guess sports games are. 
They're 100% about this. Although they do have, like, campaign modes nowadays, so maybe not. I don't know. Anyway, um, speaking of cyberpunk, like, look how cyberpunky this scenery is. The Great Wall of China. Doesn't get more cyberpunky than that. Um, this is literally just outrun, just with, like, futuristic cars painted on. And the speedometer has been jury-rigged to show, like, a thousand miles an hour uh, when it's, you know, really clearly not that fast. Because the, the, it's not like the... The trees and the signposts are passing us so fast that, like, they're just a blur. They're just as visible as an outrun when you could only go, like, 100 miles an hour, you know? But anyway, speaking of Cyberpunk, have you guys been keeping up with Cyberpunk 2077 news? That is an upcoming game uh, by, was it Project Rect or, or CD or something? Actually, I'm, I'm totally blank on the actual name of the company. But anyway, Cyberpunk 2077, it's like an RPG game kind of like fallout and you live in a cyberpunk future that game looks freaking insane and it kind of looks like a game that i was born to play slash a game i will never play because it will be too overwhelming it'll just be too much game for me to play you know um the older i get the more i enjoy games in like small doses meaning i enjoy a game i can pick up play for half an hour and then put down and you know, I don't want, like, a game that's going to take me, like, 500 hours of hard grinding to unlock every single secret. Sort of like, ah, pass. I just, I, you know, I, I know I'm going to get, like, 50 hours in, and then that'll be that. Like, I'll never play it again, so. Um, although, as I was saying over the break, I, I did get really into The Division, and I, uh, admittedly, I'm a little addicted to still playing that, so. Uh, who knows, who knows. But Cyberpunk 2077 looks awesome. Looks totally like a game that I would play. I love cyberpunk stuff, as I've said. Um, it's interesting to think that in the year 2077, maybe somebody will have a gaming VR channel out there somewhere, and they're going to play Cyberpunk 2077 on January 3rd in 2077 on their channel, and all their subscribers will be able to say, like, hey, look at this old retro game that was... You know, pre it predicted in the year 2077 all this stuff that didn't come true, you know. Just the same way we're kind of mocking this game. That would be weird. But, I mean, I'm, uh, I guess it almost certainly will happen. Somebody's going to play Cyberpunk 2077 in the year 2077, and that is weird to think about. But, uh, anyway, uh, you know, metaphysical meta stuff aside, whatever. Um, Cyberpunk 2077 looks like an awesome game. What happened? Oh my god, I just like drove from, from one road to another. Okay, I guess we're on this road now. I'll take it, I suppose. That was weird. Um, yeah, there's all sorts of stuff. There's like, uh, you know, you can get like cybernetic implants in your body, and there's like a whole living city, and you can just like walk around the streets like Grand Theft Auto style, and you can like just take all these like missions for corporations, like Shadowrun style, like... I don't know, it just looks like an awesome game, so... Um, I, for one, am in favor of that. You know, I would be in favor of cyberpunk generally as a genre making a big comeback because you don't see too many cyberpunky um, sci-fi shows and movies and, and video games and stuff as much as you did in the 80s and 90s. And I love this stuff. Um, actually, Maniac, the Netflix TV show, which is actually a really, really good show um, if you guys have not watched it yet. It has... Uh, Jonah Hill and Emma Stone, basically reuniting from Superbad, but they're totally different characters. And they live in like a weird Blade Runner-esque futuristic society. A little more comical than Blade Runner, but kind of like dark comedy. It's, it's, that, that's actually another series. It's super great. Oh, there's like caution signs. Hey, finally we have buildings. We're finally in a city. It took us four, four routes, but we're finally, I think, in a city. Oh, and now the buildings are gone. You know what? If we could end this end this little let's play on a city on an urban environment, I'd be very happy because it'd be very suitable for our topic of discussion today. But yeah, if you guys have not seen Maniac, that's that's another that's a show you should check out. I got all sorts of recommendations for what do you want? Shows, movies, YouTube channels. I can recommend anything to you. Just let me know. Let me know in the comments down below, and I will recommend you stuff. But uh, yeah. Yeah, that, that was a great show. And, like, just more shows like that. Not necessarily with the same topic, but just in the same kind of world would be cool. So, yeah, if, if you've never seen Maniac, you should definitely just go watch the first episode. See what I mean? Like, it, it's, it is a very, like, Blade Runner-esque, but kind of dark, in a dark comedy way 
uh, environment. And Blade Runner, Blade Runner, both the original and the 2049, have such an awesome, awesome um, just setting. You know, it, it's just such a cool world that they've got for Blade Runner that they need. They need more movies like that. They just need more movies. Um, anyway, I think we have seen everything there is to see with OutRun 2019. And as I say, it is the year 2019, so I don't know if you guys have any experimental supersonic jet cars, but I don't. So I'm, I'm willing to say that they goofed up when they guessed that this would be the future. But, oh, there's an ending? Oh, there's, a, oh, there's actually credits. Oh, this is awesome. Yes. Okay, we are watching this. I love it. I, I do like the music and the graphics and all that stuff. Um, but I like the graphics of the cars. The graphics of the driving didn't really blow me away. It really just felt like OutRun. So, I mean, it was kind of cool how you could, like, do jumps onto higher and lower roads and stuff like that. But other than that... Um, oh, I w they put me in the credits. And cast of characters. Tom, Robert, John, Sammy, Charlie, Lucy, Nancy. Like, the most generic names ever. And car stunts. Here's the actual developers of the game. But anyway, yes, I hope you guys had a good New Year's. Welcome to the year 2019. Keep an eye out. If I do do some live streams, I will sort of post them on my channel. It's upcoming. And uh, as always, I hope you guys have enjoyed the video. If you do, don't forget to like it and all that stuff. I have a lot of great things coming this year. I have some things already done and ready to up to sort of be released. I have some other plans to do things. So, you know, the 1001 series is going to be coming back uh, probably in about a week or so. Um, but, you know, until then, we got some fun games to play. Feel the beat. Oh, there's actual music and stuff. Interesting. So, uh, yeah, do come back soon. And, uh, yeah, I hope you guys had fun today. And uh, looking forward to many more fun games in the year 2019. Anyway, um, until next time, my friends, you all take care of yourselves, and uh, I will see you in the cyberpunk future. And so until next time, guys, peace.